Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, here comes 3D9. It's called the Magnet. Uh, it's kind of hard. So we're going to go through this together, and we will hopefully teach you guys how to do this. Asterix, okay, keep in mind that when you guys are watching this stuff, whether you're one of my students or you're a follower from out there in the abyss, you guys want to absorb this stuff. Don't just do click, click, you know, as I say, do this, do that. Make sure that you're understanding the tools that we use and make sure that you're understanding like my process and how I'm going through them and how to figure out how to create these 3D models. Okay, otherwise you're not really learning anything. All right, so here we go. We are making this 3D model. This is called the magnet. It's 3D9. Um, you'll see that there are three different tiers of extrudes. So if we started at this zero level right here, we would have this one block here get extruded forward, this little block get extruded forward, and then the big block in the back will get extruded back. You'll also notice that there are six drill holes, but they don't go all the way through. They go through about seven eighths uh, inches. So not all the way. This is a depth of one. They go about seven eighths. Okay. All right, looking at the views here. What I want to do first, first of all, looking at the right view, I think anybody in the world can tell that that's not the view that we're going to draw first because there's just not enough information there and it's very complex okay looking at the front view we can create this shape don't be distracted by all the dimensions if you want you can actually just erase all those dimensions and get a clean look at what this is supposed to look like now I'm gonna bring them all back but you can see that and I'll get rid of this stuff too just so you can see it it's gonna look something like that okay so it's not really that hard uh, we're gonna need some double lines because one, two, and three are going to be used for the big piece, and they're also going to be used for the small piece. Then we're also going to need double lines for one, two, and three because that's going to be used as the outside of the small piece, and it's going to be used as the inside of the medium piece. Okay, so let me bring those dimensions back. Let's see, is that all of them? Yeah. Okay. So this entire block, we're going to start with the rectangle around the outside and we're going to work our way in. It is four and one fourth by two and 15 sixteenths. So let me get rid of this. Let's go back to 2D wireframe. I'm going to go to the front and we're going to start drawing. Four and one fourth, two and I believe it was 15 sixteenths, four and one fourth, close. Let's double check that. Yep, that is correct. All right, so if we did an offset of 730 seconds, that's going to get us to this line, and then 1930 seconds, and then 1130 seconds. So 730 seconds comes first. Mm, yep, 730 seconds down, 730 seconds up. 1930 seconds is the second one. And then I believe it was 1130 seconds, 1130 seconds, like so. So that's the first bit that we need. We need to also know where the center of those two circles is located, which is going to be three and one eighth from the right side to get to the center of both circles. So if I go offset three and one eighth, that's going to give me the center of the circle. I can use a two point circle or I can use the radius. That's up to you. You can go like this. You can even type the number. I think the radius of that circle is 5 16 and the other one is 21 30 seconds. So let me show you a two point circle. If you have two points that you want to draw a circle between, um, but maybe the midpoint wasn't here, you know, because you can see by doing the radius, we could just go like that. But when the midpoint is not right there, you could use a two-point circle and go one, two. And we could go one, whoops, let's start that again. Two-point circle, one, two. So now I'm going to trim and leave the left sides of those circles. I'm going to trim and leave the right sides of those lines. Something like that. Don't need this anymore. Okay. Now the next part is going to be here where there's a fillet that comes down and a fillet that comes in. We need to find where this line is because we already have the other one and we know that the fillet is a radius of three quarters. So what that means is 
I'm looking at this number, 4 and 1 30 seconds. That's from the right end down. And by the way, if you want to try to get ahead of me a little bit, pause the video and see if you can do the next part. And then if you can't figure it out, you could always come back to the video. That's that's uh, as we get further along with these drawings and they're more and more advanced. I would definitely try to do that. Um, so anyways, from the right side coming in, 4 and 1 30 second gets me to this line. And I have a radius 3 quarter inch fillet. So, offset, 4 and 1 30 second. Fillet, radius, 3 quarters, like so. Now, remember earlier when I, oh, we got to trim that. Earlier I said that we're going to need some double lines. We need a double of these three. We need a double of these three. So select these lines because here's what, what's going to happen. If I take this shape and I close the ends, and I do a join, that's going to take away all those lines. And I need those for the other pieces. I need them for the middle piece, and I need that for the bigger piece. So let's bring those back. Let's select these six lines. Copy. You can do any base point. Just make sure that you click it down on the same base point again. And then now we have to single click. You don't want to do a window selection because that's going to get both lines that are there. If I do a single click, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That's the big piece. Type join. Eight objects converted to one polyline. At this point, I actually could just move this at a special distance. Special distance meaning a number that you will remember, like 5. Um, because we'll finish each one and then move them all over 5. And then they should be right back on top of each other again. So now I have, we got to close some stuff. I still have double lines on these because they're going to be used for the inside one and for the outside one. I got to close the ends. So if I'm going to do this one next, one, two, single click, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, join, eight objects converted to one polyline. Take that one, move it, five. And then it's easy. Take the last one. Close the ends. Oops. Join. That should be a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 to 1, which I didn't really get a chance to see. So hit F2. That'll bring up the entire command line. And it says 10 objects converted to one polyline. So we're good. And then take that one and move that over by 5. So now they're all on top of each other again. We now have to find the location of the circles. If I go like this, at the midpoint, here, let's bring this one back out for a second. Five. If I go like this and I draw a line across, that's the midpoint of where those circles are going to go. So they're going to be, let's see, three quarters of an inch from the end, then one and a half, then one and a half. Now you'll notice that these two are in line and then this one kicks up. So we're going to have to figure that one out later. So for now, these two are down the middle, three quarters, one and a half. Um, what I'm going to do so I have an offsetable line, I'm actually going to pull this back apart. I'm going to click on it and explode it. I'll put it back together when I'm done because now I can use those end lines as an offset point for three quarters. 1.5 and then 1.5 again but we can't draw those circles yet we can draw these four so we'll go with a radius circle I want to say it was 530 seconds but I could be totally making that number up yeah 530 seconds and there's six of them so take one maybe copy it from the center point okay I no longer need these But I'm going to need this. Uh, no, I actually don't need that. You can get rid of that too. Now, what this dimension here is saying, this 11 sixteenths, it's saying that, hey, from the center of the drawing, 11 sixteenths down is going to be the center or midpoint of these two circles. So 11 sixteenths is our number, but we're going to need something going like this because we need to go 11 sixteenths off of something like that in order to get this tiny little intersection where this 5.30 seconds circle is going to go. 5.30 seconds radius. Get rid of the lines. 
like that. All right, now don't select the circles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All single clicks, just in case there was some line behind there, which I know there's not, but doesn't matter. Ten to one. Move these back over. Five. All right. Now we're ready. So that that was like the most of the work right there. Everything else is going to fall into place really easily. But you want to get that tough view out of the way in 2D because it's really tough to do all that hard stuff later on. Back to the top, bottom right corner. This one is going to get extruded back negative one. And I'll show you where it says that on the plan. Right over here. Oh, I'm sorry, I messed that up. Bring that back. One is the entire depth. It's not, um, it's five eighths that it's going to go back. And then the medium one is going to go forward three eighths. So we'll go this one, extrude, negative. This is where negative positive is important. You want to go backwards, negative, negative five eighths. This one is going to come forward, positive three eighths. I have to like remember these numbers. <laughs> um, now the other piece that's back there is going to be tough to select because it's right here but it's lighting up these other things. By the way, if you're not getting those lines lighting up, that's very important for a lot of drawing. Type selection preview and have it on three. I think zero turns it off and I think one doesn't have it on. Well, it looks like one has it on too, but I know if it's zero that you won't see it. Okay, so selection preview, make sure that's on one or three and that's what's going to light up these lines. So anyways, it's right back behind this line. So you find a line that you know it's behind, and then you're going to do a line cycle, which is a shift space. So you're going to hold shift and hit space one time, and then let go. And as long as your cursor didn't move, it will have that selected. So shift space, click. Now I've got that line that was behind there, or that, uh, that, that joined shape. Okay, that one, how far is that going to go? Well, it's not going to go 730 seconds because it's actually back here and it's coming from here to this point. So if this thing is 3 eighths and we subtract 730 seconds, 3 eighths is the same thing as 6 sixteenths or 1230 seconds. What's 1230 seconds minus 730 seconds would be 530 seconds. I'm getting like three phone calls right now. I don't know what's going on. Um, hopefully nothing bad. 530 seconds would be how far we want to go with that one. So once, yeah, let me do that line cycle again. Extrude 530 seconds. Okay, so now we have those three. Let's check it on conceptual. So we've got one, two, three. That's the way it should be. This one was a negative number, negative 5 eighths. This is positive 3 eighths, and this was positive 530 seconds. So now we're going to use the union tool. I didn't even end up changing my 3D toolbar up here, but you can do that if you'd like. 3D basics. Um, which is the gear in the bottom right corner that you have to go to 3D Basics. Union, and then you're going to select those three things and hit enter, and you should see them all go together. Now, the circles have gotten lost somewhere. Let's go back to 2D Wireframe. They are still on the zero plane where we started. This is a circle right here. So you can see that they're back where, where we were, but we want to have those at the front edge, which is actually three-eighths of an inch forward from that point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select those circles and I'm going to move those this way on the green line by 3 eighths and then just double check that they went on the front surface which it looks like they did. Now I can take those circles and I can extrude them back negative 7 eighths. So it doesn't go all the way through but it goes most of the way through. And then the last step here would be subtract what do you want to subtract from the big model enter and then what do you want to subtract would be all six circles enter go to conceptual double check your work you'll see the drill holes but they don't go all the way through and then now I've been doing a bunch of orbiting so make sure that you go back to the top and reset your view to the bottom right that's also the same thing as southeast isometric we're gonna to go to hidden before we print we're going to put line weights on there. We're going to put our name, period, whatever. And that text site can be one fourth. And then you are done. So that is 3D9. This is the last thing that you're going to make that's kind of like, eh, what are we making here? You know, uh, going forward, we're going to start doing some, um, some things that are realistic objects. 
and they're going to have like envir environments and they're going to have lighting and shadows and and materials and textures and things like that. So it's going to get pretty fun from this point. All right. So that's it. That's that one. Uh, thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. Like, subscribe, uh, tell your friends, tell people you don't like, tell your neighbors, tell your dog. Don't tell your cat because I don't like cats. Um, but, you know, tell grandma. I don't know. Tell anybody you want. All right. This is good stuff. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. And I will see you in class. Or maybe I'll see all you other people somewhere in Florida or something like that because you guys are not from around here. All right. Thanks. Goodbye.